All right, welcome to the Lockdown Lowdown. I'm Dev Sarni, and joining me today is a man with a remarkable story. He was a young amateur boxer who developed a horrific skin condition, and it looked like he could never box again. He had to rebuild his strength from scratch, but he did it, and he got himself back in the ring, and he had a pretty successful amateur career. He's now at the point where he's got himself a professional deal with Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren. It's a remarkable story, and I am delighted to be joined by Jonathan Kumutio. Jonathan, how are you doing? I'm, I'm fantastic, man. I'm just happy. You know, um, I'm grateful, and I'm making the best of this quarantine as well. Yeah, well, look, I mean, welcome to the team. Might, might I just add, the, um, the trim's looking pretty fresh. Yeah, thank you. You know, Show us. Um, Tell them. I'm, <laughs> you know, yeah. I had to make sure I got the trim. You know, um, I'm Davidson on the channel. Um, I'm signing with Frank Warren, signed with Frank Warren on Queensbury. So it's only right I look fresh, you know what I'm saying? So I would say, I'd like to say I'm the freshest looking guy in quarantine right now. So um, if anyone can challenge me, you know the Instagram. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I mean, straight away, this man is plugging his Instagram. Come on, tell, tell us the handle. It's at JK Boxing. So one word, JK Boxing, for all the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of that. There you go, easy. Get in touch, JK Boxing. Let's, let's find out if there is a trim that challenges this young man. <laughs> um, right, so, I mean, talk me through this story, mate, because it's incredible. It's a boxing story like really few others. Tell me about mm -hmm. it. Okay, so I started boxing in 2011 at Finchley ABC. Um, a friend of mine kept on challenging me to go down to the local club and spar him. But if I'm honest, I wasn't interested, you know. And I was more worried about, you know, coming home, my parents seeing a, a black eye on my face, um, a bruised nose, broken nose. And I was thinking, oh, Lord. See, my mum, she's strict. So I was like, nah, 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 I'm not going to go. He kept on challenging me kept on challenging me and I said you know what I'm gonna give it a try I went down to finish the ABC sometime September 2011 and I fell in love instantly so I guess love at first sight does exist <laughs> <laughs> I had my first fight in 2012 October I won that that was a few months before my 17th birthday I then went on to have just under 30 fights I would say I would have had at least double but I was suffering from a skin condition called hydrotinnitus, or HS, also known as acne inversa. And I was suffering for that for four years. And it didn't start at the beginning of a boxing career. It started about three years in. So I was winning a lot of fights, coming up, and then it just hit me. One day I had a ingrown hair on my underarm. I went to see a GP because it wouldn't go for months, but it gave me no pain. She gave me some medication and then it just started doubling in size. At the time, it was just on one of my underarms. Fast forward a few months, it was painful. I couldn't put my arm down. So I was chilling like this all the time. Just had my hand up, my arm up, still training and all that stuff, you know, as, as alpha males, you know, we don't want to go to the hospital. And then, unfortunately, I was forced to the hospital because there was one night where my arm just felt like it was going to explode. Suddenly, I was watching a film with a few friends and I was like, I was walking up and down the house. They asked me, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I just said, uh, boxing. <laughs> but I had nothing to do with boxing. So I went to the hospital. They drained and removed the abscess, so the lump on my underarm. And I thought it was the end of it there. It was painful, though. I was out for about six weeks, recovered reasonably quick, but my skin wouldn't close. So I had like a small tear that was tiny. And this was about sometime in 2015. Fast forward to 2016, October. I won the London Under-20 Novice Championships. And then I lost in the national semis to the eventual winner who beat an opponent I already beat before. And then my coach, Sean Murphy, told me, take a week or two out of training, then come back in. So, As just, I was just, to, just to, to pause there, just to interject. So did yeah. they all know, Sean Murphy, is he aware of the, the issues that you were going through with, with your skin? He was aware, but he didn't know how serious it was. The severity of it. We, right. Yeah, the severity, because even the doctors didn't know. It took two years for them to diagnose me correctly. 
they just thought I kept on getting repeated abscesses. So you can imagine all the different types of medication that made me try. Um, so yeah, but what they didn't know was that I was I was taking eight strong antibiotics a day. I that was something that I kind of kept away from everyone. I was just like, you know what? I don't want to stop boxing. I don't want to be told I can't box. So I just took the pills and I still trained. Yeah, that's what happened. So in the national semis, I lost, took a week out, and I started to feel really ill. And this time I started to feel weak on top of the abscesses coming back. And by this point, it spread to my under my other underarm. So I was on both underarms, not just one abscess, several. And then Christmas came. I remember sitting on Instagram and Snapchat, and I was seeing everyone going out, enjoying themselves. And that really upset me because... Not because everyone went out, but because six weeks prior to that, I just won the London Championships. And then now I can't get out of bed. I can't even do five star jumps. So I was like, damn. And I remember telling myself, the day that I feel better, I'm going to make sure I apply myself to boxing properly. Because sometimes I'd get caught up in the lifestyle. I'd get caught up in going out, having celebrity friends, um, and, and enjoying myself a bit too much. But that made me really reflect on how I've been applying myself to the sport and applying myself in life in general. So that happened. I felt ill. Like I said, had another operation in January. This time I was out for eight months, bed bound. It was tough. It was, when I say it was tough, it was tough. I remember, so fast forward eight months, my doctor told me to start training a little bit. And I went to Pure Gym at 3 a.m. I was in there on my own. I tried to use uh, the bench press. I couldn't even move it. I was like, damn. Then I went to use the Smith machine bench press. You know, the assisted one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not, I not, that I use it. not that I use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's attached to both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't so need the assist. Man. I tried to do 10 reps. No weights. I couldn't. I couldn't even do 10 reps. And I remember leaving the gym. And if I could cry, I would have cried. Yeah. That day was, was, was tough because you can imagine... Before I even started boxing, I could definitely lift the bar. When I was young, I don't know how young I was, I could probably still lift the bar, 13, 14. And the bar's only, what, assisted as well. It's probably max 15 kilos. Mm. That hurt. But, you know, I had to start from scratch. Boxing from scratch. Um, I had to start using the dumbbells at four kilos. You know, the right at the top rack. Yeah, the one that yeah, no yeah. one ever touches. <laughs> Started from those weights and moved all the way down. I boxed, and then in the 2018 season, I said, "You know what? After I lost in the London ABAs against someone, I felt as though I was better. Then I I started to shift my focus on chasing down my doctors and to find some type of solution because they would just put me on different medication all the time, right. and it would work." In a sense, it wouldn't make it worse, but it would keep coming back. And I just said, I can't keep boxing like this. Even though I'm winning fights, I can't keep boxing like this. So I chased it, I chased it up, got an appointment with my dermatologist. He said, go and see the surgeon. I saw the surgeon and she said, if you want to save your boxing career, you have to take this risky operation. And I said, what's that? She said, you've got to have a skin graft. We have to remove your sweat glands right. because your sweat glands are what's causing the abscesses in the terms of the HS, the skin disease was attacking me via my sweat gland. So it would block up the pores. And then, so she said, if we remove your sweat glands, then we kind of remove the source of the problem. So, but she said, it's a 50, 50 operation. I said, you know what? If it's successful and I can return to boxing, I'm down hundred percent. We did it November 2018. And at the time, I wasn't using social media for about nearly two years because I was just down in general. You know, I felt as though I wasn't on the same level that I was at. I was chasing the old me. But I had the operation. I saw the video and I said, I have to put this out. I have to put this out because there must be people out there who are feeling what I'm feeling, going through what I'm going through. And maybe this can help them because at that point, I prepared myself for a long time, so I was fi I was physically ready for the operation, and I put it out on social media. It went viral. 
over 300,000 views and I received literally thousands of messages from people all over the world, from other athletes, from normal people, civilians, any, everybody. And, and that's when I realized, you know what, there's actually a lot of people out there who are going through similar situations that I was going through and complaining about. And that made me feel a little bit better. And also a lot of people reached out to me and they said that I inspired them and I should take up um, public speaking. I wasn't really interested, but once I got back on my feet and I couldn't train so much, um, I got in touch with a few schools and so many schools were asking for me to come in that I had to just stop because I had to focus on training. I had to focus on this pro boxing transition. But I've been to over 20 schools all over the UK. I spent time with over 10,000 students and many of them, most of them said I inspired them. And it was for me, it was for in hope to inspire them through my story and to urge a growth mindset and for them to try out boxing. I took them for boxing workshops and many of the young girls, they didn't want to try it before, but once I got them on the pads, they wouldn't let me go home. I could be booked for school from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. I'm leaving at 4.30 because the <laughs> kids won't let me go. Their parents, the teachers are asking me, oh, can you come to a classroom, please, please? And I'm like, you know what? And I loved it. I loved it. It gave me more motivation. Honestly, it gave me more motivation. And I realized that obviously the youth are the next generation. So I felt that I must empower the youth on this journey that I make. You're motivated obviously by what's happened to you. you you've mm -hmm. triumphed over your own adversity and, and you've actually got motivation out of these kids that you want to inspire. You're already doing a, a tremendous job, but can you imagine the inspiration if you go on to become a champion, a world champion. 100%. That story just gets better and better and better. And, the, you know, the motivation just increases, right? A hundred percent, because, you know, we all go through things and I've learned to never compare my story to other people's. But there was a point where I was always complaining, oh, my arm hurts, oh, I'm bleeding this, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. But then one day I realised that there's people out there going through what we're going through and they're picking up those same situations and winning with them. So I stopped complaining. I just got on with it. Tell me a couple of things. Am I right to say that there was a moment where the doctors told you, you're not going to box again? This is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, several times my GP said, you know, you're going through this. There's no cure for HS. This is going to be you for the rest of your life. So what, what do you think when you're, when you're told that you've put your life into boxing? Mm -hmm. what, what do you think when someone tells you that it has to be taken away? It hurt. It, honestly, it hurt. I, like I said, I remember sitting on my bed New Year's Eve, seeing everyone going out and I couldn't get up or do five star jumps. And that's when I felt, damn, this might become my reality. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that for me, that hurt. That hurt. But I overcame it and anyone can overcome anything. And I'm just glad that I paid attention to the right things and I believed in myself and I kept on telling myself, I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to overcome this. And people like Tyson Fury, there's so many mentors out there that we can look up to. We can go on YouTube, type in their names, watch their stories. Mm -hmm. And it motivated me. There was, there was several people that I just paid attention to. So them go through their triumph and it just gave me more energy to to do this and and i'm gonna do it i've done it i'm turning pro and i'm gonna show that you know one you can overcome hs it isn't lifelong two that imagine my one of my doctors told me that i was performing at about 50 percent when i was suffering from skin condition taking eight strong antibiotics a day so imagine me now I believe I'm going to be unstoppable. And you're complete, completely cured now? Completely healed, no treatment, no medication, nothing. So you're going to be a problem in this boxing world, huh? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm very confident in myself. I believe I have the capabilities to go all the way. And if I keep applying myself accordingly, I'll get there. Am I right, right to say, as, as part of this, um, these, these operations that, that you had the recovery you can't sweat anymore under your armpits is that right 
yeah, I can't sweat anymore. So there's no sweat glands. I don't sweat. So if I go to uh, a family gathering because I don't go raving anymore, you just see me cool, chilling. Yeah. You know, on a hot day, I'm just, I'm just out there. On holiday, I'm just there. <laughs> well, just the coolest <laughs> man in the room. The, the pros, yeah. However, when I'm training, people are like, are oh, you not sweating? You're not putting in the work. Then they see me sparring. They're like, oh, damn. Okay, he's not lying. He can't sweat for real. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, and your, your nickname, by the way, it's, it's just, it's JK, isn't it? It's JK. And I ain't just kidding. But when I turn pro, it'll be just knockouts. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, brilliant. I was, I was about to suggest, um, would you incorporate the kind of not being able to sweat into the nickname like Jonathan No Sweat Kumateo? But I mean, you've smashed it there by saying, you know, it's not just kidding, just knockouts. All of, that's fantastic. Well done. Yeah, JK, just knockouts. <laughs> Tell me about your style then. Is it all about knockouts? Is that what you're going to bring to the pro boxing game? My style, I'd say that um, I can box in different styles. I adapt to each opponent. But I would, if I was to pin it, I'm an aggressive counterpuncher. I'll we'll be boxing in and around welterweight. I walk around just a few kilos over the super welterweight limit. So mm-hmm. my coaches, my management, they think that I can definitely make welterweight. What do you think of the, uh, the British welterweight scene at the moment then? It's thriving. It's thriving. Um, the British Waterweight scene is good, but if I'm honest with you, I don't really pay attention to the British scene or the domestic scene. I pay attention to myself and I pay attention to the world champions, such as Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao, Living Legend, still doing it. The only one to be world champion in three different generations. And Terence Crawford, for me, he's the pound for pound number one. He's yeah, the yeah. best Waterweight and the best in the world, in my opinion. What do you like about him? His style, he just, he, just well, he can box southpaw, orthodox, and he adapts to every opponent. You never really see him struggling with anyone. And I remember when he boxed Gamboa, Gamboa was one of my favourite fighters. He demolished him. You are, uh, you're mates with AJ. Talk to me about mm-hmm. that. Yeah, we've been friends for a few years, um, even before the Olympics. So I've seen his come up from ABA champion to world silver medalist to Olympic gold to British champion to winning the IBF from Charles Martin to losing to Ruiz bouncing back becoming two-time heavyweight champion of the world I've seen it all and you know what I must say about AJ he hasn't changed the same AJ that won the ABAs is the same AJ that's two-time heavyweight champion of the world he hasn't changed and he's been a fantastic role model for me a great mentor some of the things that he showed me and some of the things I've learned, not just in boxing, just about life. You can't even put a monetary value on it, honestly. I've learned so much. People would pay to see some of his sparring sessions and I've been blessed enough to even train alongside him, not just in the boxing gym, outside, to spend time with him in private, to learn life lessons. So it was a blessing and I'm grateful. So you're turning pro now. I mean, he, he's been a pro for a little while now. Has he given you any advice? Yeah, he, he gives me advice all the time, but um, I haven't told him just yet. So oh, um, okay. I'm trying to keep that as a surprise. <laughs> I'm due to tell him very soon, but yeah, I haven't told him just yet. So we'll see. But he gives me advice about the pro game all the time. He tells me that amateur boxing is a sport. Pro boxing is the hurt business. Was he there during your uh, your kind of everything you went through skin wise? It sounds like you knew him during that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I remember at the time when I had my second operation, he was in Dubai. He was messaging me every day, every day to check up on me, and it was crazy because some he was in Dubai, I'm in London, and he was busy. You can imagine how busy he is, and some people didn't message me as much as he did. And they were my friends and they were here in London, but he was checking up on me more than what they did. So no, he was there throughout. That's nice. That's, that's, that's good, good to hear. So well, one thing I've noticed about you, JK, you've got, a, you've got a strong Instagram following for someone who hasn't had you know, any professional fights. And, and you, you mentioned it yourself. I guess it's related to not only your, your friendship with AJ, but what you've been through and documenting your mm-hmm. struggles. And you, you seem to have gained a bit of a following. Is that right? 
Yeah, um, it's crazy. Like I said, with the HS thing, people message me literally every day. I received two messages today from someone from, I think it was New York and someone from Germany telling me that um, they came, stumbled across my Instagram via the HS hashtag and they're asking me for advice. One of them is telling me their story about how they suffered from it for over 20 years and they're, they're so happy to see me overcome it and they're just urging me to live my best life. And that was literally today. So, and what, we're 18 months plus, nearly 18 months since my operation, since I put it out. And I'm still receiving a lot of messages about every day. And what's crazy, right? When I put out the video on social media, it made my Instagram blow up. Just before that, I was in about 25K. It mm -hmm. just blew up. I was gaining followers every hour. You can imagine, it kept me very occupied during the recovery. I was in bed on Insta. <laughs> my screen time was screaming crazy numbers. Yeah, I bet, um, the, I bet the DMs was were popping as well. I bet the DMs yeah. were popping, eh? <laughs> the, DMs, the, DMs, the DMs were popping, popping. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'd be lying if I said if they weren't. But it definitely helped me connect with many great athletes from across the world. Creatives, models, you name it. So... It was a blessing in disguise. It made my Insta grow up, blow up. And it also, the most important for me, it opened the key to be able to go into schools and speak to the kids about their, about boxing, my story. And if I didn't put out that video on Instagram, I wouldn't have done that. Over 20 schools, like I said, over 10,000 students, and I still get many requests from teachers asking me all the time. You've overcome so much. You've uh, mm -hmm. you got a good social following. You've got friends in high places with AJ. It feels like you're, you're on the right kind of track. What, what's the ambition now? What do you want to achieve in boxing? To become a champion. And once I become champion, to, in fact, along the journey to becoming champion, to empower the youth. You know, I wasn't introduced to boxing until age 15 properly but you know i want to introduce people to boxing and i want i want people to learn and understand that you know what boxing gives you a discipline like none, none no other and it gave me that but that was me age 15 some people can learn that from a younger age no matter what age actually they can learn that and they can understand that you know what it's a controlled violence people think boxing is violent and boxers are violent and they're just scared, but it's not even that. People that start boxing and box consistently, they become calm. Why, why Frank Warren and Queensbury Promotions? Why is this the best place for you? Because you guys, Frank Warren, Queensbury, are one of the premier promoters um, in the world, in my opinion. You know, you guys got the likes of Tyson Fury, two-time undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. The, the only two-time heavyweight champion in history to never have lost in the ring. So, you know, to be stable mates with guys like that, hey, it's a dream come true. Mum, if you're watching, I made it. So, um, now, honestly, you know, to have the BT Sport platform, one of the biggest channels in Europe, you know, it's a good place. It is a good place. Look, anything you want to add before I wrap up? That, you know what, whatever you're going through, you're not alone, honestly, you know. And whatever you're trying, whether it be in boxing, art, um, karate, swimming, whatever it is, just keep going because eventually, eventually it will pay you. And eventually it will keep you away from certain things that you don't need to be caught up with. And if you enjoy it, it will pay you back and you'll have a great life. And that's what I hope will come from this. You know, I love boxing. I'm in a gym all the time. I'm a gym rat. So to have this opportunity to sign to, you know, Frank Warren and Queensbury, to be on a BT Sport platform, for me is a dream come true. And I'm ready to show the world what I'm capable of. So the name's JK, Jonathan Kamito. Follow me on all my social media platforms at JK Boxing. So thank you, Dev. I appreciate it. Mate, welcome to the team. And look, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you fight. I think um, you, you're doing a lot of good stuff 
for the for the JK brand. I've even noticed because we was emailing the other day, you got your own little signature thing with like a picture of you going like that. Great, you know, great on brand. Now I just want to see you fight. So um, yeah. Oh to oh it, oh, I'm confident. Listen, anybody who's been in there with me, they know I can fight. They know I can fight. And the worst thing about it is, as an amateur, I was performing at fifty percent. My doctor told me that. So imagine now. Imagine now. I'm in the gym all the time. I'm in the gym all the time. All the sparring rules that I've had, all the pros that I've sparred, they know what I'm about. Trust me. So, you know, I'm on the right platform to show everybody that I can fight. And I just, I'm not just a, someone who's good at branding or I'm not a social media guy. I can really fight, you know, where I come from, hard times. Look, you're in the right place. You've got a, a great promoter, fantastic platform. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you, JK. Welcome to the team. Thank you, Dev. I appreciate it.